Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today we are discussing manufacturing accounts. What does manufacturing account means? What does manufacturing account means? The accounts are relating to manufacturer. Manufacturer is one who is not buying the goods like a trader from other businesses. Instead, they are manufacturing or producing the goods themselves. And we'll be seeing today that how does manufacturing accounts of a producer or manufacturer are different from those of a trader. Trader is one who buy goods and then resell them at a profit. And manufacturer is one who manufacture, produce the goods themselves in a factory and then they sell the goods to the customers. Therefore, going on to the details of manufacturing accounts, and how do we make them? First of all, there are some basics that we need to learn. So to learn the ropes, we will be starting with cost classification. What is cost classification? Cost classification is how do we classify the cost? Yes, sir. Ji, beta. Cost classification is beta that we need to understand that how many types of cost there can be in a manufacturing environment in a factory. In a factory, beta cost can be classified into various ways, and one of those ways is we need to classify cost by its elements. What does elements mean? Elements means components of cost. There are basically three components of cost. One is material, one is labor, and another one is expense. So let us uh, take an example of the iPhone factory, Apple iPhone, and the Apple factory in which the iPhones or iPads are being manufactured. There can be three components, three types of cost that are required to make an iPhone. First of all, we need material. Material can be uh, semiconductors or it can be chips or ICs or it may be screen, glass and plastic and metals. And these are all the materials that are required to make iPhones. Then we have labor. Labor are the people who are assembling or they are producing the iPhone components in the factory. And expenses may be the depreciation expense for the plant and machinery or maybe the factory rent of the Apple factory or maybe some other expenses there can be such as electricity that is required to run the machines or maybe the fuel cost required to run the machines and these are all known as expenses. To produce iPhone in the Apple factory there can be three types of cost namely material, labor and expense. There is another way also beta to learn how to classify cost and the second way to classify cost is by direct and indirect classification. Now what does a direct cost mean sir? Direct costs are any costs that are traceable or identifiable in the product or service being made. Traceable costs or identifiable costs are known as direct costs or any costs that are major or primary that are very important, very crucial to make a product and these are known as direct costs. And indirect costs are costs that cannot be easily traced or they cannot be easily identified, means they are not identifiable or they are not traceable easily and they are not major costs, there can be minor cost, okay, or anything that is not primary that can be secondary. So if we can tell that, uh, to make an iPhone, we need one microprocessor, okay, one uh, microprocessor chip, maybe Intel uh, inside chip or some other manufacturer chip. If we can trace that how much quantity of any particular material or labor is being put in to make an iPhone, then these are known as direct costs. And if we cannot ident identify that exactly what quantity of a material is being made used to uh, make one of the iPhone then it is an indirect cost. So there can be basically six types of cost based on what we have learned right now. There can be six types of cost. So better based on these there can be six types of cost. Material can either be direct material or it can be indirect material. Labor can be direct labor or it can be indirect labor. And expenses can also be grouped into two parts that is direct expense or indirect expense. Okay. 
so based on these beta the cost can be classified into six types material can be direct or indirect labor can be direct and indirect and expenses also can be classified into two types now sir what is direct material but a direct material is material that can be traced directly in making a product for example uh, to make to make a dress the clothing the fabric that we use is a direct material okay because if you go to a tailor the tailor based on his or her experience can tell you that how uh, what measurement of clothing you require to make a suit of your size okay so this material fabric to make a suit is a direct material because it can be traced directly in making a product or there can be other examples as well if we are making a wooden chair so the wood that we are using to make a wooden chair is a direct material why because the wood can be traced the carpenter who is uh, experienced he can always tell you that how much quantity of wood do you require to make a product of this type okay to make a chair of this type so therefore material is a direct cost okay material is a direct cost give me a minute okay then beta indirect material is the material that cannot be traced directly uh, for example if you ask your tailor that uh, we understand that we need to bring this much uh, quantity of the fabric to make this dress uh, what about the thread what about the thread that what quantity of uh, what reels of thread do we require to make the uh, this uh, dress so the tailor will ask you beta uh, that uh, you are not uh, need to worry about the thread okay because it's my job to stitch your clothes okay and whatever quantity of thread would be required i'll be making the appropriate arrangement for that okay and you do not need to bring thread why because uh, he being a tailor for maybe n number of years uh, the tailor will say you that i have never uh, ever made a uh, calculation of as to how much quantity of thread do we require to make a dress okay because it's a very uh, cheap material and uh, the thread is not very costly normal uh, type of thread so therefore uh, whatever quantity is required they can easily provide for that and thread is indirect material okay so anything that cannot be traced directly to make a product or uh, and if you ask the carpenter that how uh, many nails uh, would you put in to make a wooden chair so the carpenter would say ma'am or sir i have never counted that how many nails uh, i actually require to make a wooden chair okay whenever i need to join two components of wood i use the nail with a hammer and i have never counted the number of nails that are required to make a chair then this uh, nails uh, would be indirect material okay nails would be indirect material so what about labor labor can be of also two types one would be a direct labor other would be an indirect labor direct labor beta are the labor that are directly involved in making that product such as the tailor's time can be traced as to how much time the tailor would take to make a dress to stitch a dress then the tailor would be a direct labor or the carpenter who is making the wooden chair so that carpenter's time can also be traced then it's a direct labor okay so any of the labor that are directly working in a factory uh, in a machine or doing a uh, work with the hand and they are uh, making the product they are directly involved in making the product all of the production department maybe cutting department painting assembly finishing molding testing all of these labor are known as direct labor because the the labor time can be traced directly or any labor that is not directly involved in making a product and what would be the example of that sir maybe there is a supervisor supervisor does not make the product directly with uh, themselves supervisor just make sure that all of the labor are doing their work properly and any of them is not uh, corner cutting okay or any of them is not wasting his or her time so supervisor will ensure that people are doing their uh, task effectively or efficiently then these supervisors time would be uh, tra traced as an indirect labor okay because we cannot trace that how many minutes a supervisor spend on each particular product 
okay so there can be watchman of the factory there can be supervisor there can be manager of the factory or it can be a security guard or it can be a electrician in the factory so a uh, technical staff so uh, or maybe the cook who is cooking the food for the labor so all of these labor that are not directly involved in making the product and they are indirectly supporting the workers so they will be traced as an indirect labor and what about sir direct expense most of the expenses are indirect in nature such as indirect uh, such as rent we cannot trace that how much rent do we need to pay to make a single product because rent is not normally based on number of products we manufacture rent is normally based on uh, uh, on the time basis okay so the length of time you use the product you need to pay the rent even if you are producing more or less and your landlord is not worry about will not worry about that how many units are you are making or not he will uh, make sure that you are paying the rent on time because of the time that are utilizing uh, the factory okay so rent is indirect expense so is the electricity we cannot trace that how much electricity is going to we are going to consume to make a single product okay so electricity uh, would also be indirect expense and rent would also be an indirect expense and insurance of the factory would also be an indirect expense so expenses are mostly indirect so what can be a direct expense sir uh, there is only one example of a direct expense uh, in our course and that is a royalty uh, what does royalty means beta whenever we are making a product uh, that does not belong to us or the brand name is owned by someone else so we are going to pay them the royalty we are going to the pay them for the name or the goodwill or the brand name that we are using or the formula that we are going to use and this is known as royalty uh, for example pepsi cola in your country middle east or in our country pakistan we are both manufacturing pepsi cola so but the thing is that pepsi is not a pakistani brand neither it's an uh, arabic or uh, middle eastern brand it is basically a us based company pepsi cola international so either we make pepsi in dubai or either we make uh, pepsi in karachi so we are going to pay royalty to the original founders the parent company that is pepsi cola international that is headquartered in us okay so that royalty is basically based on number of units we are going to manufacture okay uh, for each can of pepsi we are going to pay some amount and for each uh, packet of lace chips or some other chips that they are manufactured by pepsi group we are going to pay them and for each bottle of water aquafina we are going to pay them so this is known as royalty royalty is basically direct in nature so when we are uh, then uh, dividing the cost into six categories now it's time to combine these if we add up all of the direct cost such as direct material direct labor direct expense if we add up all of the direct cost this is termed as prime cost okay prime cost what does prime cost mean prime cost is based a uh, basically prime word is derived from primary okay so any cause that is direct in nature or its major or primary and these are known as prime cause so but a sum of all direct cause is known as prime cause and if we add up all of the indirect cause in the factory such as indirect material indirect labor and indirect expense if we add up all of the indirect cause in the factory these are termed as overheads okay so there are two important terms one is prime cost it is sum of all direct cost and secondly there are overheads overheads are the sum of all indirect cost okay so beta we learned two methods of how to classify cost one of that is the cost can be of three types material labor or expense and the cost can be of two further types uh, a material labor and expense can further be subdivided into two categories it can be direct material or indirect material and direct labor and indirect labor and direct expense and indirect expense thirdly beta third way to understand cost is we can understand the cost by function function uh, normally means department okay so there can be two types of cost uh, if we classify by function it can be a production cost or there can be non production cost production cost is also known as beta manufacturing cost or maybe factory cost okay so if you have a factory okay you can say sir that we have a factory or you can say that we have a manufacturing setup or you can say we are producers and we have a production facility so it means uh, the same okay manufacturing cost factory cost or production cost means the same
सो वॉट कंप्राइजेस अ प्रोडक्शन कॉस्ट सो बेटा प्रोडक्शन कॉस्ट कंटेन एनी कॉस्ट दैट आर इनकर ड्यूरिंग प्रोडक्शन ओके दे आर इनकर एट द सेम टाइम एज द प्रोडक्शन इज हैपनिंग एंड एनी कॉस्ट दैट आर बींग इनकर ऑन फैक्ट्री फ्लोर ओके ड्यूरिंग प्रोडक्शन ऑन द फैक्ट्री फ्लोर एंड एनी कॉस्ट दैट आर नेसरी टू मेक द प्रोडक्ट these are all termed as production cost so uh, which cost would be classified as production cost first of all beta prime cost prime cost was uh, some of all direct cost and then we had beta production overheads overheads beta means indirect cost so basically uh, these six types of cost namely uh, prime cost means some of all direct cost direct material direct labor direct expense and production overhead means indirect material indirect labor and indirect expense But if we add up all of these six types of costs in the factory, these would be termed as production costs. If we add up all of these six costs all together, uh, all direct and indirect costs of, of the factory would be termed as production costs. Okay, so production costs mean these six costs, and which are the non-production costs? Uh, if production costs are costs that are incurred during production, then the non-production costs, beta, would be costs. that are incurred before production or after production and a uh, production cost were incurred on factory floor but non production cost would be incurred outside factory and not in the factory and non production cost were not to make a product instead that were cost relating to other than making the product or maybe support related cost okay support related cost so sir which cost would be support related cost so sir which cost would be termed as non production or non factory or non manufacturing there can be selling cost selling cost means beta any cost that are necessary to sell the product uh, be it the salesman commission okay sales persons commission or maybe any cost that are related to the outlet to run the outlet okay uh, uh, the outlet or the shop that we are we have opened to sell the products okay so the outlet rent or maybe the sales person salary these are all termed as selling cost but after selling cost there can be advertising cost you all understand what is advertising whether it's a social media advertising on instagram or facebook or tiktok and whether it's a print media advertising in the newspapers or magazines or journals or whether it be a television a tv advertising okay so brand awareness these are all uh, non production cost there can be r and d cost research and development and research and development is done before production and selling and advertising is normally done after we have the product ready okay research and development cost would be outside factory it would be incurred in the lab and it would be incurred before production then there can be a distribution cost distribution uh, relates to Uh, distribute the product okay it will it would be uh, termed as delivery cost or carriage outward okay carriage outward is distribution cost uh, you want to distribute the product L uh, normally we see that pepsi cola truck is moving here and there and they have pick up the stock from the factory and they are delivering it to multiple uh, supermarkets okay supermarkets or the corner shops and all that these are termed as distribution cost then we have administration cost okay admin uh, or office cost any task that is not done by any department would be done by administration and any cost that would not be classified in any other department would be termed as admin related cost okay so the accountant salary or the lawyers fees so these are all admin and legal cost that is being incurred or office cost uh, then we have beta finance cost finance cost means the loan interest that we have the loan that we have taken to run the business uh, the interest that we are, need to pay on the loan would be termed as finance cost so these are all non production cost so beta uh, the last and the final way to classify the cost would be we can classify the cost by its behavior although uh, we would not uh, normally be using this last method here but still it will help you uh, in the later uh, part of your syllabus and the final way to classify the cost uh, would be by its behavior and what is behavior of cost means cost behavior beta means the way cost behave 
or the way cost react uh, with the change in activity okay if we are increasing the activity uh, for example the number of units or number of hours so what impact those activity changes would have on the cost okay and this is how we uh, this term is coined uh, by behavior so by behavior the cost can be classified into few types first of all that is variable cost now what are the variable cost means uh, maybe you have studied uh, it in business studies or economics a uh, variable cost means a cost that vary with the level of production if we are making more units and if we are working for more hours the, then uh, the cost would be higher and if we are uh, making lesser units or we are working for less hours then the cost would be lower okay and these are termed as variable cost so uh, example would be direct material okay all of the direct cost beta are basically variable cost direct material direct labor direct expense these are all variable cost why because if we are making more units the material cost would obviously would be more and if we are making lesser quantity uh, than previously then the material cost would be lower okay but after variable cost the second cost that we do have is uh, maybe fixed cost fixed cost uh, if you understand by the name itself fixed cost are the cost that tends to remain fixed no matter what is the volume or activity so if we are making uh, more units than before or if we are making less units than before but still the cost would not change and this would be termed as fixed cost for example rent okay so the factory rent or office rent would be the same no matter if we are making higher output or lower output or working for more hours or less hours again the rent cost would be same then it can be admin salary maybe accountant and accountant or manager or supervisor these are not normally paid uh, according to the volume okay so even if we are making more units or less units or working more hours or less hours then the administration salary accountant salary would be the same or maybe depreciation so the depreciation that is straight line uh, does not depend on the number of units and it will be calculated using a fixed formula no matter if we are making more units or less units then the depreciation would be the same then there is another variation in the fixed cost and that is termed as step fixed cost now what does step fixed cost means step fixed cost basically says that fixed costs are not fixed in absolute terms the fixed costs are only fixed for a certain level of output and if we exceed that certain level of output then the cost would be increased and then it would be stepped again and what does this mean let me explain you step fixed cost uh, there can be an example of a teacher for example we have opened a school or a montessori okay we have opened a school or a montessori and for that we have decided to maintain a teacher student ratio of 1 is to 10 this means for every 10 kids we need to hire one teacher okay so beta if we have one uh, student or two students or three students we still need one teacher and for example if we are paying teacher salary of five thousand dollars okay so if we are paying the salary to the teacher of, to five thousand dollars so even if there is uh, one enrollment in our school that is first kid have been enrolled we still need to pay the teacher five thousand dollars so if there are two students three students or the students may keep on increasing the teacher would be one only uh, and this would be uh, repeated until uh, there are 10 students so when the number of students exceed 10 for example if there are 11 students then we need to make another class and we need to divide uh, this uh, section into two separate sections and we need two separate teachers now instead of five thousand dollar fixed cost now we need to pay ten thousand dollars of fixed cost okay so uh, what happens to this fixed cost this uh, uh, cost got increased once and the, now it's again fixed and now the number of students uh, once uh, if reach uh, more than 20 that is when there are 21 students then again we need to split the batch into three and we need three teachers okay so the this uh, teachers uh, cost would be a step fixed cost so that it will be fixed for uh, from student one till ten 
okay it will remain fixed but what happens if there is 11 student being enrolled then we need to step up the uh, number of teachers and the fixed cost would increase from 5000 to 10000 okay and then it will be, will would remain same until we have more than 21 students okay and whenever there are more than 21 students then we needed three teachers then again till 30 student this would cost would remain fixed similar would be a uh, case with the supervisor and employees okay so one supervisor for 10 employees maybe and when the, when there are number of employees exceeding 10 then we need two supervisors so it is a more realistic version of fixed cost and the fixed cost says that cost will remain fixed no matter what is the volume of output which is not realistic and the realistic thing to imagine is that that cost will remain fixed only uh, till a certain level of activity and if we exceed that certain level of activity then the cost will be increasing then we have it as semi variable cost semi variable cost or semi fix or it would also be termed as mixed cost mixed cost means it, it is a mixture of both variable and fix it is a mixture of both the variable and fix and it would be termed as semi variable for example uh, utility bills okay uh, we uh, are paying bill of maybe uh, telephone or maybe we are paying uh, electricity bill so let us take an example of telephone uh, uh, if you can uh, if you imagine a bill uh, that a bill has a fixed component and this is known as a line rent or meter rent okay and line rent or meter rent would be fixed no matter uh, either, uh, either you use the phone or not and either you use the electricity or not if you, even if you are out of country on vacations you still need to pay the bill and the minimum bill would be the line rent or meter rent so uh, sir uh, will the bill be remain fixed all the time no uh, it will keep on increasing once you make uh, start making calls or once you start consumption of electricity okay so the overall electricity or te telephone bill contains uh, two things one is the line rent or meter rent that is the fixed component and the uh, another component is variable component okay on the variable component vary with the level of activity so the more calls you make the variable uh, bill would increase and the lesser calls you make the variable part would decrease similar is the case with the electricity okay the more uh, electricity meter units you consume so the more is your electricity bill and there can be other example for this as well uh, there can be the salary of uh, maybe a salesman okay a salesperson salary is basically of two components one is uh, their fixed salary fixed salary would not depend on the number of units that you sell okay it would be depending on the time that you are being uh, given the duty okay and if you sell more units you will also be maybe be paid the commission and commission part in the salary would be variable component okay and this is uh, what does a semi variable or semi fixed cost means it is a mixture of both variable and fixed components so beta, this is a basic exercise relating to cost classification and there are some costs from a to O, okay these are the costs and what we need to do we need to classify these costs into uh, categories okay so there are categories such as direct material and we have a direct labor then we have a direct expense so if we add up all of these three columns it would be termed as prime cost but we do not need to add up here we just want to classify these costs in one of these columns then we have production overhead what does overhead means Production overhead means beta sum of all indirect costs. Uh, if it's an indirect material, indirect labor, or indirect expense of the factory, these are all termed as indirect costs. Production overhead means all indirect costs relating to factory, indirect material, indirect labor, indirect expense. Then we have administration cost. Okay, admin or office means the same thing. Then we have selling and distribution cost, and finally we have financial charges. So, beta, what do you guys need to do? You need to tell me that uh, in which category do all of these costs would fall. So, let's start with purchase of raw material. Uh, beta, basically, purchase of raw material is part of direct material. Okay. So, the purchase of raw material would be classified where? It would be classified as direct material. Okay. Purchase of raw material is a direct material. Then beta we have direct wages. Direct wages is another name for direct labor. Okay. Direct wages or production wages or direct labor means the 
same thing this is the second one that is direct labor so let us see what about the third one general factory expense just remember whenever the examiner doesn't mention it as a direct expense or it doesn't mentions it as royalty okay there can be only two names for direct expense either direct expense itself or royalty whenever it's not written as a direct expense or royalty then it would be termed as an indirect expense and all of the indirect cost beta would be classified as production overhead okay indirect cost would be classified as production overhead then we have depreciation of what we have depreciation of machinery uh, but a machinery depreciation is an indirect expense again an indirect expense is part of production overhead what is production overhead basically production overhead beta contain three types of cost it can be indirect material it can be indirect labor or it can be indirect expense okay so basically uh, this depreciation is an indirect cost of, uh, as well so therefore it will be termed as production order what about the commission on sales if we are paying commission to the sales person then it will be relating to selling cost okay if the commission is being paid to the sales person then it will be a selling cost so therefore it will be termed as a selling cost so then we have a factory rent rent is basically indirect expense and it cannot be traced that how much rent do we pay for each unit so therefore beta rent would be termed as production overhead why because it is an indirect expense relating to factory then we have carriage inward of raw material if you remember from your earlier studies uh, uh, we used to calculate a uh, cost of sale and the format for that was opening inventory then we need to add purchase then we need to add carriage inward so basically beta carriage inward is part of purchase or part of material okay so if the carriage inward is relating to raw material it would be classified in what category it would be classified as direct material itself okay so if you have bought material worth 1000 and if we have paid 100 dollar transportation on that now this material has cost us 1100 okay then royalty royalty beta is another name for what direct expense royalty is another name for direct expense so there are only two names for that one can be direct expense or royalty any third name for expense would be termed as an indirect expense and it would be part of production over it then finally we have stock of raw material again stock of raw material would be termed as uh, direct material okay stock of raw material so let's move uh, further we have some other parts as well and i need to make the size smaller so that we can also see the heading mm, further small okay then we have better some other items as well such as administration salary and admin salary beta would be part of what it would be part of admin cost okay admin salary would be part of administration cost so i am going to put the tick here admin salary would be part of admin cost then we have indirect labor beta any indirect cost indirect material indirect labor indirect expense would be part of what production overhead okay so indirect labor would be part of production overhead then we have a bank charges bank charges beta would be related to which category last category that is financial charges okay it's very uh, important that you must learn uh, to classify costs if you cannot understand classification of cause then it will be difficult for you to attempt the manufacturing account question then we have carriage outward carriage outward beta is another name for delivery cost and another name for that is distribution cost okay to distribute a product this means to deliver the product to the customer maybe a supermarket or the end users home then we have discount allowed and this is a bit tricky one discount allowed is basically part of what financial charges and why are we giving discount to our customers because they must pay us early and what will happen if the customers will pay us early 
uh, if the customers are going to pay us earlier than promised, then we do not have to take out the loan or bank overdraft. And better if there is no bank loan or overdraft, then interest would be saved. Okay. So basically, discount allowed is part of financial charges. Okay. Be because we are uh, giving them discount so that they can pay us early. So it is relating to the finance. Then factory lightning, it is basically indirect cost. Uh, of the factory and all of the indirect costs such as indirect material indirect labor and indirect expense would be termed as what production overheads 